I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Seifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. In this episode, we'll be talking about app store screenshots, regular expressions, style guides, and more. Let's check it out. First up is a blog post from the 37 Signals blog, Signal versus Noise, about designing screenshots for your app in the Apple App Store. So if we go ahead and take a look at the post, they give a couple of examples right here. And they say, you know, you want to provide a sense of who you are, how hard you worked, and prerequisites to using your app. You also want to communicate what your app's job is. So they say later in the post that they like the fact that there's text here that's actually explaining how you should use the app. Or taking that idea a little bit further, they suggest actually providing a little bit of a tutorial saying how your app should be used more specifically. Uh, I really like the fact, and they say this in the post, I also really like the fact that they actually have pictures of the app on a phone in a person's hand. It gives you a real sense of what the app is actually going to look like when you're using it and gives you some sort of idea, an idea as to where you should tap on the screen. And so if you are designing an app for Apple's App Store, you should definitely check out this post. There's a couple more examples in there and design those, uh, those images for the App Store. And if you are submitting an app to the App Store and would like a tasteful headshot of Nick or myself, please drop us a line on Twitter. I'm at Nick RP. And I'm at Jay Cypher. Looking forward to it. Next up, if you ever use regular expressions, sometimes it can be kind of a pain to test your code with them. I use them on the regular. <laughs> expressions. So there is a great website called DebugX. Uh, it's currently in beta where you can put in your regular expression as well as choose the different flags to it. And then it will show you whether or not your test data matches. What? Now, yeah, I know. Isn't it crazy? It's like we're living in the future. Now, uh, one thing that's great is right below it, there is a handy reference chart to see what exactly is in the regular expressions. Uh, another great thing, you can even click the libraries and uh, you'll be good to go. So anyway, great website. Um, check that out. You'll find a link to it in the show notes, which you can get to at youtube.com slash go treehouse or in iTunes, search for the treehouse show. Next up is forecast font. It's a web font for creating multi-layered weather icons. I know that because it says it right here on the website. Amazing. You can go ahead and download it, or you can tweet about it, and that's pretty much it. Oh, wait, no, I can actually scroll down further. It shows you <laughs> all the different icons that are in this icon font, and you can uh, basically demonstrate any type of weather that you could possibly want. So if you're creating yet another weather app for the world, uh, this is definitely something to check out. I imagine that you can use this on iOS. I don't actually know for sure. I'm not an iOS expert, but I know that you could certainly use this on your website or on your mobile web app to create some sort of geolocation-based uh, weather app. So pretty cool stuff. I mean, the icons, you know, actually look pretty nice, all joking aside. Uh, so definitely check that out and go ahead and hit the download button or there, the tweet button. It's up to you. There's two choices. There are certain weather patterns that are missing that we experience here in Orlando, Florida. That's true. There's yeah. hot, hotter, really, really hot. And don't go to the theme parks. Oh, and there's hot. also my, it's so hot out that my iPhone turned off. <laughs> that, that actually happens here. Yeah. Uh, so next up, we have a website called Every JavaScript Library You Should Be Looking Into. Ambitious. Yeah, I know. That's a very opinionated uh, claim, but it, they actually back it up with checkboxes and labels on those checkboxes that pertain to separate JavaScript projects. So as I'm checking each one out, I can actually just check it off. Yeah, exactly. Nice. So you can check what you want on here, and this will narrow down the different libraries that match what you want in a framework. So if you want something that supports events, go ahead, check that. If you want something that supports events and is a framework, hey, you can get that too. Use knockout.js, whatever. Uh, anyway, there's a ton of different combinations that you can use in here, and this is 
a really, really great library, uh, you know, in the sense that you don't want to necessarily overload your application by throwing every single library in there. So if you can get one that's a little bit slimmer, that would be a little bit more friendly to mobile devices, that's something that would really improve the user experience overall. I think a lot of web optimization is about a lot of small wins, not one really big win. So that's a, that's a good tip. That is a good tip. Well, it's two good tips because of what you said, too. <sighs> Bam. Bam. Next up is style guide boilerplate. So let's say that you're creating a website. I mean, obviously you probably are. Otherwise, why are you watching this? And you want to- Because of the talent. <laughs> uh, that's true. <laughs> and you want to kind of roll your own CSS framework. You could, of course, just use any off the shelf uh, CSS framework like boilerplate or Zurb Foundation. But oftentimes you use a lot of common CSS patterns across many websites. And sometimes it can be a little bit difficult to organize those. It can be difficult to remember all your font settings, etc. So that's where Style Guide Boilerplate comes in. And rather than show you the, uh, the page here, I'll just show you a quick demo. It will basically generate this code for you where you can type in some about text. You have all the colors that you're using. It will show you what your fonts look like. And it gives you a couple of other base styles. So if you scroll down the page, you can see what various elements look like under the CSS framework that you made yourself. So you can go ahead and download it. Looks like it's in version two. That's always a good sign. And if you look at the uh, page here, there's a couple of other pieces of information about it, but definitely check it out. Good. You okay, Jason? Great. Next up, um, Glenn Stovall gives us an overview of AngularJS. AngularJS is a JavaScript library invented by Google for creating complex client-side web applications. And he gives a really, really great introduction to how Angular works. So um, it's just an overview, but he goes through and tells you what the philosophy of AngularJS is, how some of the data binding works with, you know, just a really, really simple AngularJS application. It goes into modules, controllers, and just a little overview of the different parts of AngularJS. Uh, AngularJS is a really, really great framework that's seeing a lot more use lately. And while this blog post is a great introduction to it, you can get an even more thorough introduction to it at teamtreehouse.com, we have a workshop on it by our very own Jim Hoskins. Uh, but nevertheless, check out the blog post as well, which you'll find in the show notes. It's always good to take in information from a couple of different angles. Ooh, nice. Mm, HTML5. Next up is CSS filters, GIFs, and GIFs. performance. Uh, so It's pronounced GIFs. It, it's... it's you know, whatever you feel most comfortable with. Uh, I feel most comfortable with being correct. Basically, the article is about how when you combine when you combine CSS filters and GIFs, you actually get pretty terrible performance. And further down in the article, it says, how bad? This bad. So when you click on that link, it opens up a code pen. And actually, this is performing much better than it did before. Oh, actually, nope, there it goes. You can see these really terrible frame rates. I'm going to keep moving the mouse here so you can see that this is not actually in the video. This is actually just how bad these frame rates are. And the problem comes in, again, when you combine CSS filters with animated GIF backgrounds. I actually had to think about saying GIF there. Uh, you did good. But uh, the primary cul culprit here is the blur filter. It actually creates really terrible frame rates. So you definitely don't want to do that. If we flip back to the article here, you can see that it's easy to diagnose this and actually look at this using the Chrome developer tools. So if you go ahead and pop those open, click on the timeline tab and click on frames over here on the left, you can actually see just how slowly the screen is being repainted. So pretty cool article. They offer up a couple of different solutions to actually improve the situation, but it's definitely something that I didn't know about. I assumed, you know, if you just applied a CSS filter to an animated GIF, it would work just fine like you think it would, but uh, it's actually pretty bad. So good to know. Yeah. 
Uh, next up, we have a list post on what are the best programming fonts. Now, usually a programming font is going to be monospaced. That's a pretty big preference. But you know, there's a lot of things that you actually want to consider when you have a programming font, main, mainly separating a capital O from a zero. You know, it usually has a little line down the zero uh, or a dot in the middle of it. Anyway, this is a collection of some of the best programming fonts that are out there. Um, there's also, which, which is the best part, uh, a little display of what each of these looks like. So a um, ton of different fonts in here, about uh, a dozen of them. Uh, you can go through and vote on them if you want to. And let's be honest, of course you do. So far, Consolas seems to uh, be the winner right here. This comes with Windows, but there is a link to download it for Mac. Anyway, have a look at these different fonts. Uh, you know, it's all about what you like and what your preferences are. You know, my preference is actually to use a script font because, as they say, code is poetry. And I like to feel like my code really, you know, is beautiful when I'm writing it. So I'm going to experiment with the weather font. Yeah, that's a good one, too. Yeah. yeah. Mm, variable is misty. <laughs> so that's all we have for this week. Nick, who are you on Twitter? I'm at Nick RP. And I am at Jay Cipher. For more information on anything we talk about, you can check out our show notes at youtube.com slash GoTreehouse. Or in iTunes, search for us at The Treehouse Show. And of course, if you'd like to see more videos like this one about web design, web development, and so much more, be sure to check us out at teamtreehouse.com. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next week.